how we appoint a head of family is very important because we, it is it is the person who has been properly appointed as the head of family. He is the one who can sue in relation to family land. So our next discussion is to find out how do we appoint a head of family? How do we appoint a head of family? Now, in the case of Welbeck and Captain, Welbeck and Captain is spelled W E L B E C K versus Captain C A P T A N, 1956, to West African Law Report at page 47. The court in that case held that the head of family is appointed by the principal members of the family, by the principal members of the family. And so what it means is that if you want to appoint a head of family, you cannot go and organize a meeting where just anybody at all is going to vote by show of hands or by writing something, and you will say that you have appointed a head of family. The law has designated the particular people who must participate in the appointment of the head of family. And that it must be the principal members. So in every family, you must know who the principal members are. And they are the ones who can appoint the head of family. So you cannot go and appoint head of family by just anybody at all in the family. You organize a party and then you show your hands or you write. No, 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 no. You can't appoint like that. It must be the principal members. That is what Welbeck and Captain is saying. Now, if you read the case of Latte versus Mensa, 1958, three West African law reports at page 410. Latte versus Mensa. Latte versus Mensa gives an indication that the appointment of the head of family must be made by all the principal members of the family, all of them. It gives an indication that the appointment of the head of family must be made by all of the principal members of the head of family. It's the same Latte and Mensa lays down the position that the meeting at which the appointment of the head of family is going to be done, that meeting where we are going to appoint the head of family that meeting must be conveyed specifically and solely for the purpose of appointing the head. And notice to that effect must be given to all the principal members. Latte versus Mensa. Latte versus Mensa is telling you that one, the appointment of the head of family must be done by all the principal members. And not only that, that the meeting at which you are going to appoint that head of family, that meeting must be conveyed specifically and solely for the purpose of appointing the head. And notice of that effect must be given to all the principal members. And so if you go and you have a party where people are making merry and you go and take a microphone and you say, today we are happy, let's appoint our head of family, then you bring one person out and you go for that person, Latte and Mensa is saying that it is wrongful to do that and that you cannot do that. Because Latte and Mensa is saying that the appointment of the head of family must be done at the meeting, conveyed specifically and solely for the purpose of appointing the head. And notice of that meeting and the purpose must be given to all the principal members. Latte versus Mensa. Latte versus Mensa had added up to Warbeck and Captain, because Warbeck and Captain says the appointment must be done by the principal members. And Alate and Memsa is saying that you must appoint him at a meeting conveyed specifically and solely for the purpose of appointing the head of family. Alate versus Mensa goes ahead to lay down the position that where some principal members are giving notice of the meeting and then they absent themselves from the meeting. The appointment that has been done in the absence, it shall be binding on all the absentees. On 
all the absentees. Again, Latte and Mesa lays down the position that while some of the principal members are not notified that upon proof of such failure of notification, then such members may then move to have the decision set aside. So Latin and Mensa is saying that if you fail to notify some principal members, then when they are able to prove that they were not notified, then the decision taken may be set aside. But remember, it has already laid down that if some members have been duly notified and they have sent themselves, whatever decision is taken will be binding on them. Latin and Mensa. Latin and Mensa. And then we come to the case of Ankara versus Alodi. Ankara and Alodi say that to appoint a head for the whole family. But when there's a division in the family, one faction cannot go ahead and appoint a head for the whole family. Now, the next case to look at is Banahini versus Edinkra. Banahini is spelled B-A-N-A-H-E-N-E -E versus Edinkra, A-D-I-N-K-R-A-H. Reported in 1976, one Ghana law report at page 346. This case lays down a very interesting position. It tells us that strangers or people who are not members of the family, they can be invited to the meeting as observers, as observers. And they may even participate in the deliberations. But Emphasis on the but, but such strangers and non members, they cannot take part in the decision to appoint the head of family. So, Banahini and Edinkra is saying that strangers can be appointed, can be nominated, can be, can be invited as observers, and they can even participate in the deliberation, but they cannot take part in the decision to appoint the head of family. Banahini. Versus Edinkra, 1976, one Ghana law report at page 346. Some people usually think that once a person dies, then, oh, they are the oldest person. Then head of family, it goes to a particular person as of right. It is not true. When you read the case of Heavy versus Tamaku, Heavy versus Tamaku, it tells you that the head of family, the appointment of a head of family, it is, not, it is neither automatic, nor does it, nor, nor, nor does it devolve, devolve on the person as of right or as of entitlement. Nobody can say he's entitled to be appointed as a head of family. Look at heavy and tamaku. Heavy is yours, H-E-R-V-I-E versus tamaku. Tamaku is called T-A-M-A-K-L-O-E and others. 1958. Three West African law reports at page 342. That the case lays down that under native law and under native custom, a person does not automatically become head of family out of right. He must be either appointed or elected by the principal members of the family when the post becomes vacant. So you cannot say that you are out of right, you are the head. No, 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 no. The principal members are the ones who must appoint the head of family. Now that we have dealt with the appointment of the head of family, how can that head of family be removed? Now 